Uh, okay, one my. second. Because I did not have time to do the... Hat? What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. There we go. Okay. Let's take a minute. Uh, I was worried for a second that it was going to be the BoJack Horseman thing again. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Not exactly. Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending May 15th, 2021. So, um, some of Japan's biggest names in publishing, namely Kodansha, Shogakukan, and Shueisha, announced this week that they'll be teaming up with trading company Marubeni to start a new publisher-driven distribution business. Fine, right? Uh, the business plans to use artificial intelligence to determine where the demand is for various books and get them there as fast as possible and, quote, optimize the entire publishing distribution, end quote. Wow. So we all just game the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Red pill, blue pill. Um, before, they would sell their books to a distributor, wow. which is like a middleman, right. who would then sell the books to stores around Japan with a new system. The new subsidiary owned and operated by the four companies will be able to sell straight to stores and to directly control where the books are using the AI system and uh, tags in the packaging. Um, the idea is to uh, uh, cut down on the increasing number of returns that have been occurring as well as stabilize right. profits. And for those not familiar, basically the way it would work is that um, um, a, an individual store would say, that book is coming out, we'll take 100. Um, 100 books will, would show up, and then whichever, you know, they would sell 65, and then they would just return the other 35 back to the publisher, say, we didn't sell these, too bad, give us our money back for the 35. Um, that's how publishing traditionally works. Um, and so, you know, what you want is to make sure everything is kind of working, and, and those are kind of, those margins are thin. Um, but that doesn't always happen. Um, and it's very expensive for the publisher, who basically just has to eat the cost of all those books that they, uh, they, they get returned. Um, now, while these companies are largely known for manga in the Western world, they, along with Katakawa, control most of the publishing business in Japan, including the Japanese publication of international books. Ooh. So, yeah, that's the thing, is there are like four major publishing houses in Japan <clears throat> that kind of control everything. Um, wow. And now they're handing it all over to the machines. Uh. Yeah. Um, Which is interesting because I'm assuming that means that the overages that they put on like fire sale, mm -hmm, yeah, that mm -hmm. that's, that's going to end. Mm -hmm, yep, but you're not going to see like super deals anymore because this mm -hmm. AI is going to like crank it to a point where there's going to be handfuls of series that don't get sold, right. but like mm -hmm. hardly any. Like, right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's going to be the end of. Uh, so what? How Barnes and Nobles and what board used to be Borders. Used to do when you get those like really cut rate, you know, like cheap classic books mm -hmm. that, that you find in, in like the big cardboard bin, you know, yeah. big group. That is um, bought by pound. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not by. It's not by book. It's <laughs> or, or anything like that. So literally, they sell. Okay, we're gonna have about a pound's worth of this. So it's gonna be about nine hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go. You need to, so they they purchased it by weight, which means that the book is usually cents on the dollar. And then they yeah. of course sell for like four bucks, and so they mm -hmm. make them out crazy margin. Yeah. So that's going to be the end of that, which <clears throat> in a way is not the worst thing. But you know, I'm just thinking of the play of the Concord song, the robots, mm -hmm. where they you know basically a song about you know all the humans are dead, so we're in, we're in charge now. <laughs> so the Quiet Country Cafe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Time of Eve, yeah, Sans yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. <clears throat> um, um, it'll, it'll be very interesting. It just occurs to me. It's like, okay, well, you have these extra lots that mm -hmm. you can sell off by pallet that you've got some extra yeah. stuff going. I wonder to what degree the thing, the very few that come back, mm. could you? And this sounds terrible, but could you, as the great publisher houses, uh, look at it, auction that? Say, oh, mm -hmm. this series is entirely sold out except for these 12 books. Now we're going to put these 12 books on Japan eBay and let people so, bid them up. So the, the, the issue there is that the reason they were, they're being sent back to the publisher is because they didn't sell. Right, right. <laughs> so but, but you know the likelihood saying, of an like, auction are, you know. Well, you're going to have some that won't. The AI is going to 
be, be pretty close, but you're always going to oh, have yeah, sure, yeah. Some, <laughs> some amount that don't. It's like, that would be an interesting way to be like, oh, this is an entirely sold out series, and these are the last three. Mm, mm-hmm. Bid for them, people. Mm. Bid for them. <laughs> Dance for me, my pretties. Dance for me. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, that would be interesting. Well, and what I'm curious about is what they're going to plug the AI into. Um, because, and to be clear, when, when you know, th- this is AI in the sense of, like, big models to figure out where to, where to move things around. Right. It's not like, you know, type question into computer, it responds. Um, would uh, you like to play a game? Exactly, yes. Open that um, bay doors, Hal. Can, ent- can entropy be reversed? Can't do that, Dave. Um, there's insufficient uh, data for a reasonable answer to the question. Um, uh, one of the best Asimov stories of all time. Anyway, um, it all comes back to Asimov. The idea is, um, you know, it absolutely makes sense to plug AI into the kind of distribution equation and say, okay, given all of these past trends of what books have or haven't sold, given that this book is in the following genres, you know, how does it fit? Um, the question to me is: Do you, you know, do you factor in pricing? You know, do you have the AI say, and it should you should sell it for four ninety nine? Um, do you plug it into um, stuff like geographic distribution? You know, nobody buys science fiction in Hokkaido or whatever. Right. I can't imagine that, that you wouldn't try to put that much data as possible. In yeah, there. true. You know, and but my my question is: Is that how does this affect? Um, on online books, mm, like, you know, good you know, question. Like, yeah, you know, like on your Kindle and your, mm-hmm. you know, your various, yeah. yeah, various things because you know it makes sense from a you know physical paper, yeah, you know, point of view. But what about the online stuff? So, so does this mean that you know does that you do demographics on sites? I, I I don't think so because if the article is accurate. Um, and the driver is specifically the number of returns they're getting of physical books, then it sounds like that's really not a factor. Um, right. you know, it, it, okay. they're, they're really just trying to, to, to fix that returns thing. Um, it would be very interesting, I completely agree, to, to do that, that, that kind of data mining, though, uh, and to say, yeah. well, you know, this goes big on you know, Amazon Kindle, <clears throat> this is on the Barnes & Noble, Nook, is that what they have? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so think, we'll, yeah. you know, um, and it's kind of, it is kind of the ideal use of AI is to say, oh, it's not just the fact that, you know, these, these simple sales numbers work, you know, uh, historical romances sell really well on Kindle. Okay. Let's push those on the Kindle more. Like let's beef right. up that thing, right. which we would never have noticed if we hadn't had somebody looking at every possible genre all the time. So who knows? Um, mo- oh, whoa, sorry. Um, things shifted around a little bit. Um, moving right along, in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic and the many changes it's brought, especially to travel, the Japanese Agency for Cultural Affairs has created a new long-term art exhibition to be held at seven airports across Japan, as well as Tokyo International Cruise Terminal, uh, with the goal to connect people and culture through art. The exhibition is titled Culture Gate to Japan, and brings together artists of all kinds, as well as creative groups to depict various aspects of Japanese culture. Um, the official website describes the project, uh, Japanese culture is more diverse than you might imagine. Um, and so they're bringing in, through, bringing in folks from, from various cultures, from, uh, <laughs> this is from the website, from the mysterious world of the Ainu in the north, to the vibrant history of the Ryukyu kingdom in the southern islands of Okinawa, uh, okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the exhibition's first section oh, began in the Kansai a Airport. Cringy. Yeah, a little cringy. Cultural appropriation. A little bit. Okay, um, that's all right. But the exhibition features the art of eight native and local Kansai manga artists demonstrating the theme of coexistence with nature. Uh, so these eight creators have contributed one of a kind art pieces showcasing unique aspects of the region that many may not notice at first glance. Um, the event will continue the different themes across locations throughout the year with art installations of all kinds, evoking different cultural subjects. Uh, there's also a virtual component on the official website, which is also available in English, um, mm-hmm. which also includes information and background on the creators and the cultures they're depicting, as well as the art installations themselves and how they aim to evoke their subjects. There are also even English-language YouTube videos on each section. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
Um, so this is interesting, I think, because um, A, you have a large scale kind of cultural um, exhibition going on in a very public space, lots of foot traffic. Right. Um, and, but it's not like, um, but it's, it's focusing specifically on like manga creations. Well, not just this, but uh, it is showcasing manga creations by artists, which I think is an interesting sort of take on it because it's long form storytelling, right? It's not like, here's a painting of Mount Fuji. Um, here's right. a couple of pages from this manga that's a lot longer form story about what's going on. So, interesting. Well, hopefully that that means what these installations at airports means that we'll, as international travelers, get a chance to see them. Yes, <laughs> yes. We, we, hint, hint. <laughs> yes. When the three of us go to Japan, we will try to take photos of this in the airport. And if we don't, we'll just take photos of BWI and people <laughs> sleeping on the benches mm -hmm. and, and, and just, not... And, Japan. and Photoshop in the art exhibition website photos on top of that. <laughs> just just Mount Fuji in the background. <laughs> Walking around downtown Baltimore and this Mount Fuji in the background. Hey, it's great. Mm. No. Mm -hmm. What? If this trip doesn't happen, I may hold you to that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Do a whole video on our trip to Japan. <laughs> it's, and it's all local areas with just area. Fuji in the background. <laughs> I'll have to buy a gunplug kit and build like the unicorn and be like, and just carry it with me, like, and try to do the perspective thing, like, exactly. put it on a yes. wall and then stand like far away from it, and be like, look how big this is. <laughs> That's obviously the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. No, it's <laughs> somewhere in Ryukyu, somewhere, kingdom thing. Oh, we have to do this now. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is Shinjuku, not the red light district. <laughs> we are in Isekai in, in Ginza. We're not in a dive bar in like Timonium. Oh, cool. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, uh, yeah, uh, moving along. <laughs> I have no transition for that. In news that probably surprises absolutely no one, the Demon Slayer Mugen Train film has officially reached its next astounding record. As tallied this week, the film officially stands as the number one highest earning film worldwide in 2020, period. It has yep. earned $435 million outside of the U.S. and nearly $40 million within the U.S. so far. This sounds impressive already, but it's even more impressive with a piece of added context. Mugen Train is the first non-Hollywood or non-American film to top the yearly worldwide box office since the beginning of cinema. Wow. Damn. <laughs> and in case you'd forgotten, wow. the film debuted in October of 2020. Yeah, right. yeah it's, not, it's not like it's 10 years down the road. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, no, no I, I mean, it, it, it only had Four, two, uh, two and a half months, half months. of 2020 yeah. to build that. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Yeah. How long did it take Spirited Away to earn its its cash earnings? Um, that's a good question. Not too long, I think. Um, it, it, it came in pretty quick. Um, this but, quick? <laughs> no. Well, and also you didn't have... Um, the, the, well, that's just a good question. Because um, it seemed to me that Spirited Away came out in Japan a little while before it hit in, in, in America. Right. Um, it premiered in, wow, times have changed. It premiered July 20th, 2001 in Japan, released December 20th, 2002 <clears throat> in the United States. Year and a half. Wow. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So it probably took a while for all that money to come in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Versus point. Mugen Train. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> we do it. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that was that was what six months ago. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Ah, um. And like I said, I, I I agree with you. I don't know what the special sauce was, but holy crap! Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Um, a lot of folks with nothing else to watch. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
Uh, moving along, um, the this is just a, a fun little note. Nozomi Entertainment announced this week it'll be releasing the entire Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei anime franchise in North America, including Yay. all three TV series in the OVA. They announced the initial license of the franchise in July 2019, but it was delayed because all of the Japanese scripts were lost. Like, they, they, they licensed it and then said, hey, folks, can you send us the scripts? And they're like, scripts? What? what? Mm. Must we be had box those here. Uh, <laughs> nope, it's not there. Um, the, no, no, it couldn't find them. So the translator had to translate all of them by oh. ear. Just oh my god! Put it on. Start typing. Oh, what? Oh, I hope is that, that person they got a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> and if you've seen that's about sensei, you know how much like on-screen text there is. Yes, there is. <laughs> 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 Oh, wow. So that's why it's been a while. So, so the translator went mad. Yeah, exactly. I can't even imagine how long that would take to hear it, to, to do it by ear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Know, right? I mean, because um, now Google Translate's not great, but at least it gets a good portion of things. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, yeah. if you could scan something in and be like, mm-hmm. okay, looking looking at what it's scanned it's mm-hmm. 75% correct so i just have to tweak some of it to get it to be in here's the right what's place. interesting but to listen to it entirely yeah i wonder if that's in some cases easier because the script might not necessarily match what they recorded mm. i wonder how so often that happens lib factor yeah yeah huh i wonder how often that Jeez. happens um and i uh this actually comes up there is a uh, there's uh, Stephen Fry t- tells a story. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he is the uh, British um, audiobook announcer for the Harry Potter series. Yeah. Uh, and so he was brought on to do this back when it was, you know, another children's book. Um, and he started doing the audiobooks for it. And there is a, in the third book, there is a line where it says, Harry Pocket did it. And Stephen Fry, who has a lovely classic British voice, think, you know, British upper crust voice, it's kind of Stephen Fry. And it was just Harry Pocket, did, 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 did. Harry Pocket, did, 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 ha- Harry Pocket, did, did, did. and there was just something about it that he just couldn't get the line out. Right. And it turns out J.K. Rowling was very, very clear from the get go. She said, if there's an audiobook of this, it has to match the, it word for word because children are going to be listening to the audiobook while they read it. They're going to be using it as supplementary to, hmm. you know, learn hmm. it and understand the words and so forth and so on. So the words have to match exactly. Hmm. So he called up J.K. Rowling and said, I'm having this issue. I just can't say this word. Can I just say, Harry put it in his pocket? For this moment, she said, No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, how flexible <laughs> um, and uh, and they made a fairly big deal about Stephen Fry well known actor was doing this thing and it was kind of a big deal um, that he he was uh, he was doing this and so there was a certain amount of uh, you know no that's your job like, like, like make sure you do that he said, and then the other thing is um, um, Harry pocketed it is a line in every subsequent Harry Potter book. Mm. <laughs> a little payback. Just saying. Just saying. Um, wow. So yeah, you, you get those moments where things are just like really hard to. Uh, That's like a big. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, John, you and I we play uh, Genshin Impact a lot. Um, and that is a, a very large video game with a <clears throat> lot of voice lines in it. And you can imagine, I was watching some streams of some folks who, who do this, and this is a Chinese game translated into English, professionally translated, uh, but full of, you know, Noctilucus Jade and Magnemite and all of these, you know, more or less made up words all pushed, squashed together into these, these sentences. And some of the voice actors were saying, like I, I had long sequences where I just could not do a single line because I kept stumbling over, you know, all of these lines. So just that must be insane. 
Yeah, the Armeno Archon with the whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, hey, huh? <laughs> yeah. Shang Li working with uh, with Jiang Lang, mm-hmm. Jiang Ling yeah. working with. Uh, yeah. Huh? In fact, that was one of the things they said is that they would uh, um, they would, they would come in and folks would say, okay, so this this area is called Liyue. Okay, Liyue. No, no, Liyue. Liyue. No, no, Liyue. I'm saying Liyue. Like, what, what, what's the yeah. problem? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in college. I had so, I had a class that was uh, history of East Asia, J- uh, Japan, from 1815 to 1945, wow. and there were a couple of students who were exchange students in the back, and the the professor um, spoke Japanese, and he said he said, you know, it's funny the the nuances that occur in the language. And pronunciation is total key to getting how like a certain word works. And he looks at the guys in the back and he's like, if I say, ah, 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 we're all <laughs> looking at him like, the hell's he doing? He's like, you understand that there's differences in what I've just said. They're both like, oh, yeah, entirely. <laughs> <laughs> we're all like, and the rest, the rest you all just said like, ah, like 12 yeah. times. What the hell's it got to be? Yeah. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. like, oop, that's a thing. <clears throat> um. Mandarin Chinese has three different tones um, yeah. that, that, that affect language. Um, so, so is it, you know, mm-hmm. um, mei na, mei na, and mei na are all different words, right? Literally, um, which blew my mind until I met somebody from a province of China where their dialect has seven. Oh, wow. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, just give up now. <laughs> just, <laughs> you've this is one of the, no. Yeah, this is one of those things no. you make a mistake in that you've just told somebody <laughs> you hate them and you hope their family dies. And you're like, no, I was just asked you what the bathroom was. I'm so sorry. So so at UMBC, I decided I had to take a language. And I was just like, you know what? You know, I, I, I like Asian stuff. So <clears throat> uh, what, what's available? Mandarin Chinese. Okay. It'll be difficult, but yeah. you know, I'll yeah. check it out. Sure. Yeah, right. You know, day one, that, you know, you yeah. know, all the, the different tones. And I'm just like, uh, <laughs> French it is. Is your comprend français? C'est bon, monsieur. Yeah, right. Um, also, this week, new stories we want to touch on. Uh, Tuberaya Productions is partnering with Netflix to create a new CG animated Ultraman feature film. Oh, um, wow. The staff aims okay. to cast a mix of Japanese and Western stars, coupled with a large number of below-the-line talent from Japan. Below-the-line meaning, like, production crew, that kind of stuff, right? So, you know, not, oh. like... You know, <laughs> Terrible people from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't almost, want B-level actors. We want C yeah, or D-level exactly. actors. <laughs> oh, C. <Wow>. Um, <laughs> The film story will follow, gotta love it, baseball superstar Ken Sato, who returns to Japan to take out the mantle of Ultraman, but quickly gets it over his head when he's also forced to raise the child of his greatest enemy, uh. a newborn kaiju. A newborn kaiju. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, who doesn't want to watch that? Oh. Come on. It's going to overtake Mugen Train Absolutely. in, like, no time. We're done. We're done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that script presentation <laughs> must have been fantastic. <laughs> Hear me out, guys. Yeah. Here's okay. my <laughs> idea. <laughs> Here it is. Now, what do we say to the nice man whose car you stepped on? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm loving... Kaiju Girl Caramelize. Train. It's all about yeah. a you know, shoujo series about a girl turns into a kaiju, so you know it can work. <laughs> I'm just I'm just waiting for the return of the rubber suited baby Godzilla. Yes, absolutely. God yes. Godzuki. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. It's gonna be awesome. Where he does if the little got... chest pumping. <laughs> if you aren't careful, I will do the Godzilla genealogy bop right here, right now. Oh. oh. Well, it's after 10. Let's get finished with the news. Okay. <laughs> uh, Toy Animation confirmed last weekend is developing a second Dragon Ball Super anime film. 
to release oh. sometime next year. Um, original creator Akira Toriyama is in charge of screenplay and character design. So cool. That w- that that was a very popular movie. Like that movie made lots of lots of cash. Wow. Hmm. Um, I'm so happy. The popular and widely memed Komi-san Can't Communicate manga is officially getting a TV anime adaptation to premiere in October. The story follows Wallflower Tadano, who discovers that his classmate Komi isn't actually the aloof, cool beauty everyone thinks she is. She's actually just very awkward, so he decides to help her on a quest to make friends. Basically, it's Sakaki from Azumanga Daio, the TV series. Um, you know, and it looks like cute character design, yeah, so I'm like, it's, I'm, I'm looking it's forward very to that. Nice. Um, what I really love about it is that um, it is very much this sort of goofy comedy of this girl who, you know, basically, and I, I think there are panels where, you know, everyone sees her like this, walking down the halls, but what actually, she's actually doing is this. <laughs> on the watch. Mm-hmm. It's just freaking out about everything going on. Um, but there is genuine pathos. Like, you actually do feel bad for her that she just can't get past this, like, crippling social anxiety. Um, so, nice balance gap there. Anyway. Um, Studio Sunrise and talent agency Asobi Systems' Artist Witch Project revealed an upcoming original net anime this week, set to debut on YouTube May 28th. Um, the project will highlight Harajuku fashion, art, and music, and will feature a number of different creators and artists. So, curious about that. Interesting. Um, yeah, apparel and music creator Jun Inagawa is launching an original anime titled, wait for it, Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers, featuring an otaku hero and a magical girl anarchist. Yeah, yeah, again. Uh, okay. I'm there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I want to know what a magical girl anarchist is. I know. Is, but... <clears throat> I, I think it's basically the, the magical girl from uh, Is This a Zombie? Um, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> zombie Korowa Deska. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. I, it, does she work with the bad guys or something? I or like know. she hates hates the nominal good guys and the bad guys equally and she's in it for herself? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it could be. A... Uh, she, she's, she's just Gen X and waiting for the world to burn and last. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Oh, oh! Now I want like a a magical girl who transforms into like a '90s punk rocker vibe, you know? Oh God! Where the, the, the transformation sequence is like you know black lipstick, and you know flared tartan skirt and all that, and piercings. That'd be great. Wow! <laughs> wow! Listening to this ska music and being angry. <laughs> She could be the other housemate. Uh, the the is it is it Nana? Is she the 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 oh. sort of metal girl or is she the cute yeah. girl? They're both Nana. They're both, they're both <laughs> Nana. Yeah, well, yeah. the they're one that's Nana. the metal girl, yeah. Nana. There yeah. you go. Magical yeah. girl yeah, transforms into her. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um. Excuse me. I got all choked up by that one. Uh, a new short form anime has been announced celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Okayama International Circuit Motorsports Racetrack. Huh. Hairpin Double will be set at the racetrack itself and follows a group of racing theme themed idols who must transform into a superhero team to protect the track from mysterious monsters. Oh, wow. <laughs> Again, I'm there. I'm there because it sounds like a Dallas level, just all sorts of things. All it's, the Dallas it's, it's the it's Dallas pit. It's the Dallas pit. pit. Yes. They, this is going to be right gratuitous there. shots of like the track name. Mm-hmm. The, yep. the mm-hmm. absolute layout of the track will yep. figure every episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. It's just like, oh, okay. And there'll be other gratuitous shots, I suspect. Oh, no doubt, because <laughs> you want to see those shots mm-hmm. in this track. Right. Because exactly. that advertises this track. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, Interesting. racing is very well known for its sensitive use of the female body in advertising and things like that. So I'm sure it'll be very, very respectful. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> it will be so respectful that it will look like. Uh oh! Uh oh! Oh no! Hot mess! Uh oh! Oh no! <laughs> Wait for it! Ah, there we go! Oh boy! Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> Lily Tasha. There we go! Oh my goodness! Love it! 
I was worried it was going to be Legend of the Overfiend. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we took the high road on yes, this one. It's did. after 10. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, producer Saburo Umiya launched a crowdfunding campaign this week for an original anime project titled Ninjaxis. The campaign's trying to raise about 27,500 US dollars to fund a pilot video for the project, whose story is set in Clockwork City, where uh, two families vie for power. The project aims to highlight the traditional of the appeal of traditional 2D animation with 3D CG kept to a minimum, which is intriguing. Yeah, for twenty seven five. Yeah, you're going to highlight hand drawn mm-hmm. versus Not, using CG, which shouldn't which, be I guess... hard. I mean, <laughs> the whole point is that 2D animation is a lot cheaper. Um, yeah, but for twenty seven five, yeah, that's like terrible amount of money to pay somebody to do that by hand. Well. Again, pilot video. We're talking two minutes, or whatever, right? Like it's, it's not going to be. Hmm. It's not going to be long, I'm sure. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll um, see how that rolls. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, uh, Acclaim, the anime production company Studio Piero, has launched Piero. its new label. Uh, it's pronounced Toiro, but it's spelled plus I R O because plus is to for and anyway. And with its first project, All Rush which is set in a fictional animation studio called Studio One. Um, so we're getting another anime about an anime. <coughs> It'll be about a young man as he begins his dream career at an animation production company and discovers the job's a bit more overwhelming than he imagined. Um, so his hopes and dreams are dashed yeah. on the rocks to reality. Exactly. It's the story of long hours and him starving to death slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. All Neat. Right. This is great. This will be wonderful. There will also be a manga Horror. series... I was going to say, it's just more malt liquor anime. Right? There we go. Um, that was be a manga series, which will begin the serialization in June on Twitter. Twitter? What? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I presume it's because so many, you know, um, manga series have gotten started as, like, you know, net strips posted on Twitter or, you know, these little net manga and so forth, then build a following and you get the, you know, full manga, you know, publishing and all that kind of stuff. Eventually okay. move on to, I guess, they're moving to that direction. Who knows? Hmm. Hmm. Um, Shueisha has added a listing for a new novel in the Rurouni Kenshin <coughs> franchise. Oh. Slated to launch in July. The Rurouni Kenshin Kamiya Dojo Monogatari novel will center around, spoiler alert, Kenshin and Kaoru's wedding ceremony. Oh. And her remembrance of when the two first met. Ooh. Interesting. So the Kamiya Dojo story. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the story of the Kamiya Dojo, basically. Curious. Interesting. Yeah, As a novel. that's done well. Yeah. <laughs> Please um, me. And I'm assuming, because um, uh, they just announced the listing, don't know. I'm assuming um, the original manga card didn't write it. Maybe he did. I don't know. Oh. Huh. I don't know. Well, that's why I'm saying I'm, ho- I, I'm hoping it's done well, mm-hmm. because then, like, we should. Hopefully, if it's done well, there's there's you know yeah. popularity mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we might get an adaptation of this. In- mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Who knows? I we'll mean, see. there's certainly plenty to do in in Kenshin. Yeah. Uh, well, and the, the the final live action movie is coming out soon too. Um, so that might right, also yeah. be a, a a deal as well. Okay. Um, boy, live action adaptation of the wedding. That'd be anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> G Holdings announced this week that it has acquired the right to develop a smartphone game based on the Q anime. The game will, perhaps not surprisingly, be a volleyball game featuring cute, super deformed characters and will also have a story mode that follows the anime because Q. Will they make it to national? Oh, <laughs> Um, to Just put all the high Q team on the Are You Lost uh, um, <laughs> show, where you know you play the game and then you're on an away mission to wherever, and then you end up stranded on an island. Who survives? Mm. That's a game I could play. There we go. Um, as of number twenty twenty, there were fifty million copies of High Q in print, and it won the Shogakukan Manga Award for Best Under Manga in twenty seventeen. Um, to give you an idea of why they may be pushing that particular franchise. Um, also, kind of curious if we get any more. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. It was the sixth best selling manga of 2015, um, fourth best selling manga of 2020. Um, sold 7.2 million copies over the course of the year. So, yeah, it's Haikyuu's big. Yeah. 
and has been for quite some time. Exactly. So I know uh, Kira, she's done a Haiku um, cosplay at, before she mm. and Alan Alan moved. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a it's a thing. People love it. It's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. It's not a sports anime I've ever been into, but yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that'll do it for us for this week for the news. Thanks for watching. See you next week on the news. Woo-hoo. Um, and now, um, Jay, I would pay money to see Higurashi on ice. Uh, <laughs> I would pay money for that. Goodness. Mm-hmm. Just to see the, you know, the uh, spurts of red water do, you know, do squirting you, under the ice. Can you, yeah. How many times will the Zamboni have to come out? <laughs> and just push all the bodies away? Oh, <laughs> Put a blade on the front of the Zamboni and just clear the bodies. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> we are Higurashi. We are Higurashi. Chunkity chunk chunk chunk. <laughs> the Chicago Times said, "Why, why God?" Why? <laughs> the Poughkeepsie oh, Bee says, "We don't know what's going on, and we don't understand why." Yeah, pretty much. The LA Reviewer says, "The greatest thing that should never have been." <laughs> <laughs> pretty Come much. See it today. <laughs> 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 You'll be yeah. dying to see there it. There we are. Uh,